Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and today I'm going to give you a quick tip on using Apple Photos and Luminar. So before I get into that, let me just uh, tell you what I'm going to be doing. Um, so basically, if I switch over to Safari here for a second, um, a while ago I shot this really nice picture that uh, I really liked um, and it is this one here. However, it was shot on my Nikon D 700 which is only a 12 megapixel camera when I went to make a large print of it uh, The resolution just didn't quite hold up enough. So I actually really like this image There was particularly nice lighting that day, which is kind of one of the reasons I really like it and um, so ever <laughs> since then I've been trying to recreate this by going back to the same spot um, but it never really got quite the same lighting. So to cut a long story short, the other day I was in this area again and I noticed that the light was quite similar to how it was um, and I was using a D800 which I had borrowed from a friend of mine. Now the only problem was uh, he had it set to JPEG and I hadn't realised when I was taking the shots and when I got them back I realised that they were only JPEG so I was limited um, to what I could do with it compared to if I had been raw. But we can still do some kind of cool edits with it and I, I thought I would try using Luminar to see how I can get on and see if I can create something similar to this. Now the lighting wasn't exactly the same, um, but it was kind of roughly in the ballpark. Now originally I had processes in Lightroom, so it wasn't, this isn't straight out of the camera or anything. And the shot I got isn't it quite right either. Uh, if I switch over here back to this, you can see it is actually kind of different. Um, for start I hadn't shot this quite wide enough so I'm missing a bit off the edge uh, you can see the lighting's not quite the same and um, there's a bit of dust spots and stuff going on here which is not great so again let me just switch back to Safari as you can see but it's the same time of year and yeah we don't have the nice clouds and stuff but anyway I'm not going to get the shot exactly the way I want it uh, it's this isn't going to replace this image unfortunately it's just not good enough um, but as a learning experience, I want to show you how we can kind of process this in Luminar. Um, because it's a JPEG and I'm working in Apple Photos, uh, I wanted to show you using Luminar as an extension as well. So um, the few things are going to go through in this. So let's just get cracking. Um, so for start, I'm in Photos. Uh, I'm in the edit mode. Um, and I haven't done anything to it. And uh, what I'm going to do is go up here to this button and go down to Luminar 2018. So this will open it up in Luminar. So what you should notice here is this is the extensions version of Luminar rather than the standalone version. So we're actually still in photos. So just to make a bit more room here, I'm just going to hide this. Okay, so I'm going to start with doing some basics and then I'll kind of do some more advanced. So uh, the first thing I want to do is to kind of bring down the highlights a little bit, maybe around there. We're not going to go too far again because this isn't a raw file. I'll actually clip. I won't be clipping. I'll actually flatten the whites too much if I go too far with the uh, highlights on this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and use the accent AI filter. So we'll just turn this up and straight away you can see this is having a dramatic effect. So bring this up right up. Um, that might be a bit too much. So I'll just turn this back to about say we'll go at 85 as a nice even number. Okay, so already that's looking much better, um, but if we look over here, we can see it's not quite the same. As you can see, there's kind of much browner tones to this, so we'll we'll have a look at doing that as well. Um, but for the moment, let's just try a few other things here. So it uh, probably needs to be warmed up a bit. So because it's the JPEG, I'm not going to use the temperature. Um, I'm going to use a different control, so I'm going to go in here and add filters, and what I want is, if I can find it, is Brilliance Warmth. Okay, so I'm just going to turn up the warmth here a bit. Again, you have to be careful not to go too far with a lot of these. Okay, so that's made everything a bit warmer, um, but there's another cool trick we can use as well, um, if I can find it again. <laughs> I'm just going to type it in. Split color warmth. Okay. So this allows you to have separate controls for the warm colors and the cool colors in your image. So in this case, I am going to bring up the warm colors by 20. 
and I'm going to drop the cool colors down a bit. Uh, maybe a bit there. Okay, so if we look at this now, we can see one of the problems is the yellows are a bit too saturated. So what we need to do is add a HSL. So I'm just going to again search for this. Add this. And we can actually bring the reds up a bit on this. Actually bring them up a good bit. And then maybe drop down the yellows a bit. I'm actually going to put this before this. Okay, that's looking a bit more like it now. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add a polarizer. So what this will do is it'll enhance the blues a bit. So to about there again as with all these you have to just be careful not to overdo them because it starts to get a bit um oversaturated and false looking if you go too far um so what i might do is add some more detail in as well so let's add the detail enhancer and this one so we'll just do a small amount of everything here So I can just zoom in just to make sure things aren't getting overly distorted here. Um, and as you can see, that's all fun. So the next thing I want to do is it probably needs a bit of a vignette. So let's just go for a vignette. And again, we'll drag this in. Down. I always like a slightly squarish vignette. So usually if you just drop the roundness a bit. The controls on this are very similar to the controls in Lightroom, um, if you use that. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, if I switch back over here, you can see this is still much kind of browner. Um, but the tonality is, well, it's not massively similar, but it's kind of in the ballpark. Uh, I do like the brown tones of this, and I'm going to try and do that in a second. Um, but one other thing I do notice is that the bright areas here are still almost luminous so we can probably fix that with some curves I'll add a curve in here and it's gonna add a few points maybe drop blacks a little so to fix this the simplest way to do this is to lower the top point so I'm just gonna drop this down and then we need to bring all this back up So one of the things about the curves tool in Luminar that I'm not a fan of is when you drag the top point, it actually drags the whole curve. So if you see how that's doing that. Um, and you can't just drag the top point, which is a pain. But anyway. So if I turn that on and off, you can see the effect that's having on the actually the brighter buildings. You can see it's just kind of soften them off a bit. That's actually probably too far now, so I need to bring it back up a bit. And again, just need to readjust our curve slightly. So, before, after. I think that's a bit better. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, so now, to try and get the browns into this, um, I actually did, I have to say I'm cheating a bit here, because I actually did do this earlier, just to see how to do it. So I'm going to use this filter called Bicolor Toning. And if I bring this up a bit. So that's with purples and that's, that's, we don't want that. So there are some brown presets here, but as you can see, that's way too yellow. So what I want to do is I'm going to go with a red color here. And that, and I'm just going to lower the saturation a good bit. So, Something like this, actually, that's not really what I wanted. And maybe for the top color, we want kind of something more browny like that. And that's not bad. I mean, again, I'm never going to get this exactly right because it was two completely different days. But as you can see, it's in kind of a similar ballpark. 
Now, one of the things I noticed about this as well is I have actually raised the black levels on this, and that's actually kind of tricky to do in Luminar, because when you bring up the curve black levels, it goes a bit weird. There is a new filter to do this, so I'm just going to try that. Um, and it is the Matlock filter. So if I bring this up ever so slightly, you see, the problem is they start to go grey. So I'm going to the fade, maybe. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Because you can see on this, even though the black levels are up slightly, they're still blacks, whereas this, they kind of tends to go really grey. Uh, so there it is just a little bit. Maybe if I lower the contrast. No, I actually like it the way it is. Although that does kind of work. Again, as I said, I'm not going to get this exact, um, I'm mainly because it's a completely different image. Um, but that's not bad. Um, so whether to go with this matte look or not is the question now, so... Um, I kind of like it, but I'm going to turn it down a bit. Now the other thing is, if I look at the histogram here, this is, it's a lot of this is quite dark. Um, so I'm going to just to tweak everything at the end, I will add in a levels filter. Oh, there's no levels filter. I'm just going to try this. This might be. See, that starts to clip everything again. So I'm keeping an eye on the histogram here and I'm just making just a smidge up. It's actually only a tiny amount I needed here. See, so I can bring the blacks down as well. Okay, and maybe it might be easier to do this with curves. So I'm going to add another curves here, and I am just going to bring this up because I just want to brighten this ever so slightly. Um, but we don't want it to go too far. And I'll just bring this in. Okay, that's not bad. I think that's a bit better. So again, if we go back to our one that we're trying to match here, as I said, it's not exact. Um, the yellows are still a bit bright in this, and the reds are a bit too bright as well. So, but we can try fixing that. Um, if I go back to our HSL and go over to luminance, and we just lower the luminance on the red slightly, and maybe on the yellow slightly as well. Again, I don't want to go too far. Overall, though, that I think that's a much that's it's in the ballpark enough that I'm happy with it. So if I do it before and after, as you can see, that's quite dramatic. And bear in mind, this is a JPEG that we've started with, and it's perfectly fine. It's held up reasonably well. As long as your values aren't clipped to begin with, you can do you can still do a reasonable amount with a JPEG. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now there's one last thing I need to do, and that is to fix this dust spot. So you can actually do that within Luminar. So if I go to Clone and Stamp. Now, some people don't like the way this works, and I can understand why. Uh, what it does is basically flattens everything you've done into a new layer, and then you work on that. It's kind of more like how Photoshop would do it than, say, how Lightroom would do it. So this kind of an, this uh, doesn't appeal to some people, but for me, I don't mind it. Um, but anyway, that's what we're going to do, because I could just do it in photos, but it's easy enough to do this here. So I'm going to zoom in and move up so I can see it. So the way this works is uh, it's not like Photoshop. You don't alt click to set the source. You literally just click it first. So I'm going to click and then just draw around this. And there it is gone. That's perfect. Okay, so I just hit done. Okay, so there you can see it's created a separate clone and stamp layer, so I can turn that on and off. Again, as I said, it's more kind of like how Photoshop would do it than, say, Lightroom. So again, one last time, 
there's our before which is kind of a meh image and then there's our after which is much better and we just hit save changes and we're done so this will just render this out now and we're back in photos so I don't need to be in the edit mode anymore I can just hit done and there you have it that is how we edit an image in Luminar from Apple Photos, uh, working with a JPEG file and how to make it from something kind of boring into something interesting. Um, I hope you've liked this. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. It actually really helps us. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, if you want more specialist content, follow me on Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a million.